Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, and in this video, I'll be showing you guys some CPU benchmarks that I ran on my Intel Core i5-6600K system, and on my new Ryzen 1800X system. Now the point of this video isn't to see which CPU is faster, or to find out which CPU is faster. The answer should be pretty obvious, one is a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU, while the other has 8 cores and 16 threads. But the point of this video is to see how much of a difference there is between these two systems using these benchmarks which combine single and multi-threaded workloads. One of the reasons why I want to make this video is because I wanted to show anyone who might be in a similar situation as I was when it comes to upgrading your CPU as to what to really expect. The 6600K is a great gaming CPU, and I was satisfied by its gaming performance. However, maybe you might want to get into doing some content creation, or you need to run multiple virtual machines, or you want to do anything uh, that relates to heavy productivity tasks. Now the 4 cores on these i5s, well, they just weren't cutting it for that utility segment, and I even had my 6600K overclocked to 4.6GHz. So if you're someone that has an i5, be it a 6600K, a 7500, a 4690K, or even a 2500K, consider looking at these Ryzen CPUs. Sure, you could drop an i7 6700K or a 6700K into your system, that's definitely a viable option, and might be the best option for someone that is definitely on a tighter budget. But if you really want to go all out, want excellent value for your money, and truly want to future-proof your system, then these Ryzen CPUs are the way to go. So with these benchmarks, I'll be showing you just what kind of a performance boost you can you can expect from when, when you go from an i5 to a Ryzen 7 CPU. Now before I show you the benchmarks, we're first going to have to look at the specifications of these two CPUs and the systems they're being tested on. Oh, and if you want to check out this cool time-lapse video of my 1800X build, then you can click on the notification card. The Intel Core i5-6600K is based on Intel 6th generation Skylake architecture. This is a quad-core CPU with no hyper-threading enabled, which means the maximum amount of threads that this CPU has to offer is just 4. The processor out of the box has a base frequency of 3.5GHz and a max turbo frequency of 3.9GHz. But for my test, I have my 6600K overclocked to 4.6GHz because that is how I had used my processor on a daily basis. And I'm sure many other owners of the 6600K or any other unlocked i5 have their CPU overclocked because why else would you be buying a K-skewed processor? But I digress. The 6600K has 1MB of level 2 cache and 6MB of level 3 cache and is based on the 14 nanometer manufacturing process. The 6600K has a TDP of 91 watts. The CPU cooler that is uh, cooling my 6600K is a Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO with two Corsair SP120 fans attached to it for a push-pull uh, configuration. The CPU is paired with 16GB of G-Skill Ripjaws V-Series DDR4 memory, which is clocked at 2800 MHz, and has a cast latency rating of 15. The motherboard used on the Intel system is a Gigabyte GA-Z170X Gaming 7. The graphics card is an MSI GTX 1070 Armor OC, and the boot drive is a 512GB Samsung 950 Pro NVMe SSD. The power supply is an EVGA 750G2, and the case is a Corsair Spec 2. Moving on to the CPU from the Red Team, the Ryzen 7 1800X, which is based on AMD's latest and greatest Zen architecture. The 1800X is an 8-core CPU with simultaneous multi-threading, which is basically AMD's version of hyper-threading. So therefore, the total thread count of the 1800X is 16. The 1800X has a base frequency of 3.6GHz and an all-core turbo of 3.7GHz out of the box. The 1800X also has a single-core boost frequency of 4GHz and with XFR, can boost to 4.1GHz. I've overclocked all 8 cores of my 1800X to 4GHz, and that was all unfortunately that I could achieve. Anything further than 4GHz required obscenely high voltages, and I just wasn't comfortable running with that. So I'll be including both the stock and overclocked results, so you can see the differences in regards to performance. The 1800X has 4MB of level 2 cache, and a whopping 16MB of level 3 cache, so much higher cache on the 1800X when compared to the 6600K. The 1800X is also based on the 14 nanometer manufacturing process and has a TDP of just 95 watts, which is quite impressive since this is an 8 core CPU. The cooler that is cooling my 1800X is a Noctua NHD15. The CPU is paired with 16GB of G Scale Trident Z 
DDR4 memory, which is running at 3200MHz, with a cast latency rating of 14. The motherboard used on the AMD system is a Gigabyte Aorus AX370 Gaming 5, which is featuring that new AM4 socket for the new Ryzen CPUs. Now the case housing the 1800X build is a Corsair Air 740, which is a wonderful case in my opinion. It's a very bulky case but looks fantastic and offers exceptional cooling with an unrestricted airflow design since it's a dual chamber case. Apart from that, the SSD and the graphics card and the power supply are the same components that were used in the Intel system. Now that the specifications and system component lists are all out of the way, it's time I showed you these benchmarks. And there you guys have it. After seeing those results, it's clear as day that the Ryzen 7 1800X absolutely slaughters the 6600K at multi-threaded workloads, but I'm sure that didn't come as a surprise. Stock or overclocked, 1800X was ahead by quite the margin there. It's not even a competition. However, in single-threaded applications, the 6600K will definitely pull ahead as its Skylake architecture has an IPC advantage of about 67% over Zen and when you factor in clock speed differences, that gap grows a bit more. However, most of the applications that content creators will use, um, Adobe Premiere, After Effects, Vegas Pro 14, SolidWorks, programs like that prefer a higher thread count over higher clock speeds. So that's where the 1800X will shine. So the 8 cores and 16 threads is a no-brainer over the i5. The difference in thread count is 4 times. Now gaming on the other hand, will show you some mixed results. Now I'll have another video out soon where I'll be comparing the 1800X to the 6600K and seeing what gaming performance is like between these two CPUs. That video will mostly just be focused on gaming, so definitely be on the lookout for that video. Well guys, that covers my overview of the performance differences in terms of CPU benchmarks between the 1800X and the 6600K. I hope you found it informative and enjoyable, and if you did, then leave a like. Let me know any questions or comments down below in the comment section, and if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching guys, take care and I'll see you in the next one.